head. This is the weirdest <laughs> house you've ever seen, isn't it? Plus, if you think your extended family is a little odd, wait until you meet hers. I'm never alone in the house. And later, he moved to a remote part of the country to build an inspiring home. Wait until you see it. You never know what you might find next on Offbeat America. <laughs> Hi, I'm Patrick Clark. We're off to Ohio, where this is the ultimate water park. If you're a swimmer, you'll want to dive right into this house. The Skilkin family loves life at the beach. But a beach in Ohio? Just outside Columbus, you've never seen a lake house like this. What is this thing? This is home. <laughs> this is the weirdest house you've ever seen, isn't it? I think so. Like a glass spaceship, Steve and Karen's house looks like a UFO landed in the middle of Ohio. But this house is all about water. A 75-foot-long pool weaves from one end of the house to the other. Part ship, part water, and all fantasy, Steve and Karen say their house helps keep them in shape. In here, you can't go five steps without going up steps or down steps. So the house itself keeps you healthy. Each room is like an elevated island surrounded by curvy pine wood and tropical plants. Seventeen landings separate the rooms. The girls' bedrooms are connected by a lofted tunnel. But their favorite spot is the pool area, where swordfish and mermaids float across the floor. That's an incredible pool. Thank you. That's one of the uh, things I really wanted in the house was a 25-yard pool. Steve's former diving career at Ohio State prompted this huge lap pool. He still swims every morning. Above the pool is this curvy kitchen. Karen's favorite feature looks like a normal refrigerator, but it doesn't act like it. When you're down at the pool and you're swimming and you want a little snack, push the button and it goes down to you. Wait, 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 wait. Push what button? With the flick of a switch, Karen sends the entire fridge, freezer, and microwave down to the cooler. And in this cool water world, Steve hasn't left his diving days behind. This waterfall doubles as a diving board. Steve made sure it's the regulation five meter dive. I can do that. The next water feature, you gotta see to believe. An underground water tunnel flows back inside to the pool. And if you think this is cool... <laughs> you have your own lake? This is our backyard. This is the best backyard I've seen! <laughs> Woo! A zip line leads right into this man-made lake. And of course, the kids get in on more water action. But the best ride of all this is the biggest slide I've ever seen. What is this? This is an actual airplane emergency evacuation slide. Quick, everybody out of the airplane, go! Now, go, it's sinking! Hey! Good job! With a sandy beach, eight acre lake, and volleyball court, this place should be called the Skilkin Amusement Park, complete with a tricked out trampoline. Well, the house kinda got, you know, it kinda got a life of its own once it got started. <laughs> Whether he's swimming, diving, or water skiing, this real estate developer doesn't have to take his family to a water park to have fun. They can just go home. It fits our lifestyle. It's a very active house. Up next, we're headed to Fort Worth, Texas to meet a homeowner who has more than a few tricks up his sleeve when it comes to home improvement. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see an empty tube placed in the box and magically colored handkerchiefs. Nope, this act isn't a flop. It's just another day in the offbeat home of Derek Kennedy. Well, I think every home should have a stage, don't you? Derek magically transformed the entire second floor of his home into a stage, and the fun doesn't end there. He began doing magic 45 years ago, and he's collected a whole bag of tricks along the way. I realized I had a whole bunch of stuff and I needed a place to put it, like all collections that keep growing and growing. So when I had the house built, I had this room added on top and it's about a little over 900 square feet. 
Derek customized his home to fit his magical personality. And his magic room proves that the art of illusion never gets old. Pretty much everything in here has been made anywhere from 1900 and up, but I do have some pieces in the other room that are 100, 120, 130 years old. I think the history of magic is very, very fascinating. Derek loves finding those elusive pieces. What makes this so collection so unique is the variations I have. They made over the time period different tricks out of different materials. They would use aluminum, they'd use brass, copper, depending on what was commonplace at the time. Like popping a rabbit out of a hat, all the different colors pop out when you step in the room. There was a reason I did the walls in white, uh, along with the shelving, because I wanted the magic tricks themselves, the color that they're painted or manufactured out of, to stand out. This room isn't the only offbeat part of his home. He also worked his magic downstairs, creating a collage of cool colors. Purple carpet, bright furniture, and colorful accent pieces bring this house to life. And when the sun goes down, it takes on a whole new personality. From the funky fireplace, to the watery wall, to the illuminated libations, this house is a visual treat. I always enjoyed lighting, so I just took my passion of lights and added them to my house this way. The whole idea was to create something that was casual, but it's time fun for friends to come over. I like to entertain. And just when his friends thought they'd seen it all. This is called the jungle bathroom. I remodeled it real quick before a party. And then I realized I had no sink whatsoever for anybody to wash their hands in. So I was sitting around and advised this little contraption. I thought if I was out on a jungle or island, how could I get water? So I got a bowl and I got some guttering and piping. And voila! But Derek has yet another trick up his sleeve. People would come in the bathroom that wasn't finished up, and they always wanted to peek and see how it was looking. So I put a big Tyrannosaurus Rex that growls at you when you open the curtain via motion. Derek's passion for fun and illusion began at the age of five, when his dad bought him a simple magic trick. The trick uses a, a penny, which back in the 50s would have been a wheat penny, and a matchbook, which you simply place on top of the penny, waved your hand, and the penny would change right to a dime. Derek's home is full of clever tricks. It's hard to believe that this house was in shambles when he bought it in 1997. There were holes in the wall, there was trash bags everywhere, there was orange carpet and brown walls. It was really pretty bad. Derek ripped out the not-so-magic carpet, he tore down some interior walls, and he decked it out with bright colors. You can always change the look of anything you want with a little bit of imagination and a little bit of paint. Derek worked his magic during the renovation process. With the addition of the magic room, he literally raised the roof. And now, he's bringing down the house. But that's not all. The magic word of the night is Offbeat America. So you ready? On the count of three, Offbeat America. One, two, three. Offbeat America! Hey! Thank you for all coming. Have a good evening. Thank you. Coming up, you won't believe this home we found nestled in a hilly desert landscape. But first, find out why she's turning old newspapers into house guests. I do consider my sculptures like children because I put so much time and effort into them. That's when Offbeat America returns. In Augusta, Georgia, our next artist created a way to turn paper mache into some pretty unusual house guests. And with so many, she's never home alone. There's always a crowd at this house, but the crowd's as still as a statue. What's the attraction? Well, this artist in Georgia is creating art that's hot off the presses. My name is Kath Gerdler Engler, and in my house, Yesterday's news becomes fine art. Kath's three-bedroom home is furnished with life-size mythological sculptures, and her extended family can be found in every room. I do consider my sculptures like children because I put so much time and effort into them. 
These colossal statues are made from Kath's own version of paper mache she calls paper pulp. Well, paper mache, I think people associate with childhood and, and childhood craft projects and that sort of thing. And because I put preservatives and hardening agents in this uh, mix, these forms, as long as they're interior, are permanent. They're gonna last forever. And unlike most giants, these figures are surprisingly light. These sculptures probably don't weigh more than 10 pounds. I can put one under each arm and cart them into an exhibition and impress everybody with my feats of strength. Kath's studio is only a few steps from her home. It's the place where the daily additions come to life. I love the ancient cultures, Greek and Etruscan and uh, the Cyclotic uh, figures. And I think being exposed to all that when I traveled, and I think that eventually has come out. Creating sculptures on such a large scale meant that Kath had to get creative. I was looking for a more direct, inexpensive way to create sculpture. I love size. The primary reason I use paper pulp is probably the, the directness, the immediacy, the simplicity of it, and the fact that it costs nearly nothing. And she doesn't use just any old drag. The newspaper I use in this is primarily the New York Times because it has less color in it than most papers. Kath uses mannequin molds to form her sculptures. Once the molds have dried, she adds color and details with natural elements. I am a great collector. Every place I go, I pick up bits and pieces that everyone else thinks trash, but it's not trash. <laughs> They're wonderful things. And Kath's son, Evan, literally lends a helping hand. This is my son, Evan's hand holding the baby's head, and I cast his hand. This is probably when he was five years old. I've used him in several of the sculptures. And when the family isn't moving sculptures to exhibitions, they enjoy reading together. And even when no one's home, the statue's shadow creates the impression there's a party in full swing at the Engler home. I'm never alone in the house with all my figures and forms looming. We've never had a break-in. Some of the neighbors have had break-ins, and I always say that the reason we haven't had a break-in is that, you know, the bad guy looks in the window and thinks there's this crowd of people in here. And keeping the crowd alive is just as much fun for Cap. Still to come, remember coloring paint by numbers as a kid? They're the highlight of this quirky home. And. He built this amazing artistic and spiritual home with recycling in mind. This house is uh, constructed with aluminum cans. We'll explain next. Up next on Offbeat America, we're headed to the high desert to meet a man who carved his niche in the side of a mountain. Miles away from Taos, New Mexico, 8,000 feet in the sky, on the side of a rugged mountain is where artist Antonio Arianes built this one-of-a-kind home. Well, when I first was building this house up here, some people did not understand why I was building a house in such high elevation and uh, in a remote place. Living in such a remote location, Antonio doesn't get many visitors. And that's a good thing, because the home's open floor plan isn't exactly conducive to overnight guests. You can even see the shower from the living room. And this shower just drips with creativity. It's done with um, pieces of glass all different colors, glass, uh, gold, blue, and uh, mirror. There is um, this double helix snake it's going all the way up to the top, creating the yin and yang. From designs in the flooring to accent pieces on the wall, 
this house is shaping up to be one of the most unique around. I use a lot of circles, triangles, squares, which uh, to me they represent the building blocks of consciousness. Antonio says you'll find these basic shapes no matter where in the world you go. I like to travel and, and I get inspired by the different places I visit. I see the similarities in the cultures I visit. The symbols speak to me of that um, universality that we share in common. So why would such a worldly person choose to live in such a remote place? I decided to be in this type of home because of the self-sufficiency of it. Solar energy powers Antonio's home. And despite the blazing sun, the temperature in the house remains constant. This house is uh, constructed with um, tires and aluminum cans. It uh, keeps the house uh, warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Packed with dirt and smoothed with cement, these energy efficient walls create soft curves but Antonio often finds himself between a rock and a hard place. This is the natural rock of the mountain and it's, it's part of the house, it's part of the walls of the house. Antonio jackhammered into the side of the mountain to create this rocky room and his enterprising nature doesn't end there. Antonio even collects and filters his own water for drinking and bathing. The water is collected uh, from the roof of the house and he gathers to the front of the windows and he collects here in the cistern inside the house. With a water tank that measures 15 feet long and 12 feet deep, Antonio doesn't need to worry about running out of running water. He collects about 2,500 gallons of water. Separated from the kitchen and main living area is Antonio's bedroom, which comes with a feature that's great for lazy days or sleepless nights. Well, the skylight is a great part of my bedroom. I like to see the clouds and I like to see the stars at night or the moon. It's great. Antonio loves the solitude of his home. But if he does have company... Well, if I have guests in my house, I, uh, I have a little uh, privacy shade here for the, from the downstairs. It gives me more privacy. Antonio may live alone. But Mother Nature is never far away. Living in this type of house is really interesting because it's a communion with nature, with the elements, with the sky and the mountains. Coming up on Offbeat America, a home gallery that's as easy as one, two, three. Stay with us. If you were around in the 50s, you might remember Paint by Numbers. Look closely at this next story. You might just see your work in this home. Ah, yes, the 1950s, when life was a bit more leisurely. Americans fell in love with big cars, hula hoops, and Paint by Numbers. It's art for the masses. I mean, anyone can be an artist with Paint by Number. Welcome to the Seattle home of Joe David and Marlo Harris. They filled their one-of-a-kind home with some one-of-a-kind paintings. Why do you surround yourself with art? We just love art. We like making an environment filled full of art. And that's how we like to live our lives. From the curious to the peculiar, it's all here. But there's one collection here you can count on catching your eye. We it's like a fun room. And yeah. it's, it's where the kitchen should be, but this is more fun than a kitchen. We, have the kitchen upstairs. Affectionately known as the Tiki Room, it holds Joe and Marlo's collection of paint-by-number paintings and a few other odds and ends. There are 160 paint-by-numbers stacked frame to frame, salon style, and uh, kitsch paraphernalia. Yeah? And Why? Tiki items. Why? It's beautiful. It's art. There's everything from landscapes to Lincolns. 
four score and seven years ago, someone painted Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> For Joe, collecting paint by numbers is just cheap entertainment. What's the most you've ever spent for one? Um, probably $15 is the most I've spent for one. Most of them range two to three to five dollars. Just cheap. Yeah. Cheap fun. It's also about remembering the past. What is it about it that you like? It's the nostalgic quality of them, the composition, the color palette, so many things. Originally created in the 1950s, Paint by Numbers are designed to turn anyone into an artist. You just had to stay inside the lines. For somebody like me, I'm colorblind. This would be a good thing, a good way to paint. Yeah, because they're all numbered, and it comes with the pots of paints, which are all corresponding with the numbers on them. So you just fill in the blanks. Look, Ma, I'm painting. With a master's degree in art, Joe was inspired by paint by numbers in his early years. Can you look back and think, here's the the point where I just fell in love with paint by numbers. Probably when I did my first one, the, the sense of accomplishment of finishing that first one, knowing that you'd spent weeks and weeks getting, putting in the last color and holding it up and saying, wow, it's done, look at it. Although there are a couple of Joe David originals elsewhere in the house, you won't find any in this room. Do you have any of your own that you, that you did? No, mom threw them all away. Oh. My mom threw my Legos away. That's the way it goes. I'm still in therapy over that, Mom. But, uh, that's another story. Joe and Marlo may be pretty serious art collectors, but the only thing serious about this collection is it's all in good fun. These are all, they're just kids, but they're fun, and together as a group, they make an incredible impact, and that's what I love. It is, a, it's an incredibly kitschy yeah, room. Yeah, it's just kitschy and fun, and, and, uh, and I think that's what Joe likes about it, too. It's just that it's kind of goofy. If there's one thing you can count on, Joe and Marlo's love for art and each other continues to grow. Well, that wraps up the show. Thanks for watching Offbeat America. No way am I diving off that. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building. <laughs>